Uh, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the another session uh, on the information system audit course. Uh, today I'll be talking about uh, module two, which deals with governance and management of enterprise information technology, risk management, compliance, and business continuity management. Uh, I believe the exams are scheduled from 9th of July. Uh, I have already uploaded my module one uh, presentation on my YouTube channel. And I will also share the link with this uh, video so you can check both these uh, presentations. Uh, every day I'll be uploading, hopefully, uh, yeah, ESA modules uh, three, four, fifth, and sixth that can help you at least in your preparation. Uh, for especially for those chartered accountants who are running very short of time. So without wasting much time, I'll just start with my presentation, right? If you look at it, uh, the module two deals with governance and management of enterprise information technology, risk management, compliance, and business continuity management. Uh, I hope you all have the access to course material provided by Institute. So if you look at the module, uh, module you'll find module two has uh, five uh, chapters. It talks, chapter one talks about governance and management of information system. Two talks about GRC, that is governance <coughs> framework and risk management practices. Chapter three talks about the key components of a governance system. And chapter four talks about the performance management system. And chapter five is business continuity management. From the exam perspective, all the five chapters are of great importance because uh, in last exam also, uh, there were many questions uh, asked and framed around this, these uh, topics. I'll be today in this presentation talking about governance and management of information system. Uh, in this, I cannot, it's very difficult for me to complete the entire, uh, you know, the course. So I've thought of, uh, on, I, on the basis of exam, past exam uh, papers, I've found out certain important concepts. So I will be reviewing only those concepts. And these concepts which I'm reviewing are based on the fact that the questions and the examinations are framed from these uh, concepts. So I'll be, today what we'll be discussing about, uh, you know, in very brief, outsourcing function, IT strategy committee and IT steering committee. IT alignment with business objective, IT balance scorecard, role of various functions of IT, and quality assurance and quality management. Starting with outsourcing functions. Now, what do you mean by the word outsourcing? Outsourcing means that uh, organizations uh, uh, would like to give away certain process work or services in which they are not, that's not part of the core business, right? So outsourcing is done through a, a, you know, an agreement or a contract and technically we call it as a service level agreement. It's not normally abbreviated as SLA. So outsourcing contracts should have a written service level agreement with the vendors. Whosoever you are outsourcing is considered to be the vendor. Having the following clause from the IS auditor perspective, like if you, if you have spoken about the module one, it was talking about the IS audit and the risk. Now here as an IS auditor, what should you should be looking into the service level agreement when you are auditing any outsourcing functions as far as governance of any organization is concerned where information technology processes are being implemented. So you should look into the, and as an IS auditor, you should have concern for business processes. What are the internal controls that have been implemented? You should have knowledge or acquaintance at least of information system. You should have knowledge and acquaintance of risk and controls associated with the information system, intellectual property rights, data privacy, business continuity uh, processes and disaster recovery plan. Uh, these are the things which are essentially, and I, as an IS auditor, when you're talking about outsourcing contract, you should be familiar with, and we'll be talking more about as we move ahead. Now, what is the advantage of outsourcing? The first is that expert services can be obtained from the outside. Like say, for instance, if I am a programmer in Java and that's my core competency or my core, so I can outsource for my program, which, have, which requires another language. So then I get the best of the services that's called expert services. And it helps me saving a lot of cost. So these are the two points which you should remember. So I just wanted to highlight one thing that all the portion which are you know marked in red, 
have special significance. So you should remember that, you know, outsourcing, whenever a question comes from outsourcing, it has to do with something with the expert service as well as with the cost saving. An organization cannot outsource or transfer its accountability. Now that's very important. You, no matter you ask someone else to do some work on your behalf or execute some process on your behalf, but if something goes wrong, then you cannot say that okay, it is not my responsibility because I have given this work to somebody else. So always remember, many questions, many times questions have been asked that can an organization transfer or outsource its accountability? The answer is big no. Even if any process has been outsourced, the final accountability lies within the organization. If you are running, like say for instance, bank may outsource the various activities for data collection, data processing like that. But at any given point of a time, not, banks cannot outshine themselves by saying that this was an outsourced process, so we cannot be held responsible for it, right? You are responsible. Another important aspect, as I mentioned earlier, core business function should never be outsourced. That's for example, if banking, banking as a function cannot be outsourced, right? Because it is an important aspect on which the bank function. So if whatever is your core, that is the way, the because of which process or service or a product you are existing, you cannot outsource that. Outsourcing functions, there are certain terminology and the people who are responsible associated for, like say for instance, the word insource, right? This is an activity performed by the organization internal staff. There are certain people who are recruited for within the organization, they're employed, they're on the pay square. And when any activity is performed by the people who are in the working with the organizations called in, in sources, right? And outsource means activity performed by the vendor staff that I have entered into a service level agreement with any organization or a person who is providing me such services or that person is called as a vendor and vendor also hires certain people in his own team so that they are called as a vendor staff. If there is in a hybrid outsource function, it says the out, uh, activities performed jointly by the organization internal staff as well as the vendor. Now, some portion of the activities will be done by the internal staff, that is my organization staff, and some activities will be done by the vendor staff. Then there is an out on site activities performed by internal staff on the location. Like, let's say, for instance, I've gone for my on site uh, assignment. The on site assignment means I'm performing the activities on the location itself. Maybe, like, say, for instance, uh, I have to go to a bank, a bank's ATM at that very ATM when I'm trying to perform certain activities over there. That's my, you know, on site I'm there. Off site, Staff working from remote location in the same geographical location, also known as near shore. Now, uh, you can think about it. These are the simple terminologies that I'm explaining because um, sometimes they have asked the question related to it. Offshore, that is, staff works from a remote location from different geographical location. Like, like say, for instance, work is, I am not in this within the same geographical location. For example, you must have heard BPO and the KPO. Like, say, for instance, I have outsourced my work and I am, my office is in India, and people sitting in Australia are doing uh, some work for me. That's an offshore. Now, what are the steps involved in an outsourcing? And the first is that it is essential that we must define the functions or the activities which we are trying to outsource. Unless and until there is a clear definition of the activities, it is very difficult to draft the service level agreement. Second, service level requirement, that is service level agreement has to be defined. So there is a spelling mistake of agreement. I'll correct it before uploading it. Uh, service level requirements, that means what type of services, what are the key performance indicators that should be included on the basis of which the level of service performed by an outside or, or another vendor will be measured. That's very clearly has to be decided. I must compare in-house and outsource costs. That means, if, for example, if a particular work, I'll just give you a small example for in-house and outsource. Like say, for instance, I'm, run, I'm, I'm the chancellor of a university, right? And a university requires that, you know, nearby students come and join for different courses and programs, right? So they need a bus service. So either their option is that university itself has its own buses or the university can outsource the bus services to some another person. Now, since, now remember, now transportation and the logistics is not the core function of the university. So yes, the university has is legally entitled for outsourcing it. Now, before outsourcing, I need to compare how much does it cost if I have my own bus and I run it on a regular basis or and the cost 
involved in outsourcing this function. Now, when I outsource this function, then I am not responsible that whether the driver is coming has come or not, if there is any repairs required for the bus, because all that headache has gone to the another person. And the person whom I'm hiring for such logistic services will be exported because he's dealing in these bus services. So he's have number of drivers, numbers of buses flying across the city, he can manage. So that is basically when I compare in-house cost and out outsource cost, I'm trying to talk about the feasibility. Another important aspect is conduct due diligence for service provider, that is investigation. But due diligence you must have heard in, uh, is normally word used with, uh, you know, <clears throat> Mergers and, amal mergers and amalgamations, but here it is used in the sense that uh, trying to find out about the services that service provider is giving you assurance of. And uh, in case if you get any references from his clients, please do find that. Now, from, for, uh, confirm contractual and regulatory requirements. Now, what are, that's again, I'm talking about. So when you're talking about outsource function, two, three important things should be remembered in mind. First is there has to be a service level agreement. There has to be a clear cut definition of what type of functions I'm gonna uh, outsource and what type of performance I will be requiring from the vendor. Now, outsourcing risk reduction measure. Now, it's a very nice, it's, it's obvious when you are outsourcing certain functions to some another person who is not part of the organization directly, then there are risks associated with it. That is, anything goes wrong, done, uh, goes wrong, uh, you know, doesn't work well, may have some serious repercussions for the organization. So, service level agreement to contain measurable performance requirement, as I have discussed earlier. Then in case if you are talking about the proprietary software that is called, then you need to have an escrow arrangement for proprietary. Now what is an escrow arrangement? It is basically a type of an arrangement with another third party where the source code of the software is being kept. And this is done mainly because once the proprietary software is being, you know, I'm using it, so later on it might not have, it might be possible that the vendor may discontinue with the product or, you know, uh, make uh, changes to the product. So how do I assure that my proprietary software, which I am using on his behalf, is uh, ensured properly? So escrow is basically an arrangement with a third party where the source code is being kept for the safe, uh, uh, for the assurance that uh, nothing goes wrong with the vendor, or vendor will not cheat me. Use of, use of multiple vendor to reduce the risk of dependency, obviously we all know that. Periodic performance review, that's again an important aspect. That is, once you have outsourced, then it is your responsibility to keep reviewing the performance based on the factors that you have defined it during the service level agreement. Establishing cross-functional contract management team. Now, again, the point is when you uh, assign a team who is going to review the performance, then you should have a cross-functional contract management team. That is, people from different groups should be part of that. Uh, uh, in the team. So you have different perspective uh, for the functions. Establishing necessary control for foreseen contingencies. Now, obviously that you should be, now, as I have spoken about business continuity plan and uh, disaster recovery plan, you, you, you add certain things, one can easily anticipate that this might happen. This might, the chances are there, the probability is there. So I can uh, talk about, uh, or I can implement certain controls for the contingencies means those incidents uh, which have the pro probability of getting materialized. So if you talk about the outsourcing functions, now these are all the red words, that means I need to be remembering all these words. First is the feasibility. Then I need to remember due diligence, as I said. Now, when I say feasibility, then I'm talking about comparing cost of in-house and outsource uh, outsourcing cost. Then similarly, due diligence, I'm talking about, I'm trying to get references from the clients of the vendor about his level of services he offers. Service level agreement is very important. Then IPR, that is intellectual property right and data privacy clause, because in case I'm sharing something which is, uh, uh, which is which has got, you know, like say for instance, if you are sharing some um, uh, formula or something like that, then in that case, you need to have this protection. Business continuity plan and disaster recovery clauses should be there that in case there is a business uh, a disaster, then how much time you should take to provide it. And the last is escrow arrangement. That's very important. It is related with the source code of a proprietary software. Now, proprietary software means that is not a, it's, it's a software that is yes, developed by a particular person and he holds a proprietary right to it. 
Now, moving ahead with the second uh, in this, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, and I'll be talking about IT strategy committee and steering committee. Now, I think it will be too much uh, uh, for you to take all this, but don't worry at the end, I'm having, uh, I have designed questions also that will help you uh, to you know, recall the concepts which we are discussing here. Now, IT governance is the responsibility of the board of directors. Now, when the, I'll be talking in, the, in this next video, I'll be talking about governance, conformance, and performance. Now, these are, when you talk about the governance, now governance is talking about that, you know, using processes and structure for full, implementing, for fulfilling the objective for which the organization is being designed. So there is, it is again the responsibility of the board of directors, nobody else. Even if the top management word is there and the board of directors there, you should click board of directors. IT strategy committee now, now instead of remembering what it does, it, uh, if, with the responsibility of this committee, look at the word, the strategy. Strategy means long-term, long-term planning. And what is the role of this? This strategy committee advises board of directors, BOD stands for board of directors, on IT strategy and initiatives. Now, the strategy committee has the responsibility of advising because board of directors may, may not have that much of technical efficiency. So there is a specific IT strategy committee who advises board of directors what initiative organization should take and uh, it strategy con uh, committee consists of board members and specialized non-board members. Now, specialized non-board members means these are the technically qualified people who are part of the board. Now, strategy com IT strategy committee alignment of IS department with the organization missions and objective. Now, this is the, what is the job and the responsibility? Now, the point is information system department and the organization objective and mission should be aligned. They should go in the same direction. In fact, information system de department should complement the organization's mission and objective. They should not have two different uh, uh, directions of operations. Rather, they should be complementing each other. In a way, IT strategy committee uh, you know, sets the direction for IT. That is what will be the in, uh, information technology we are gonna use. Like say for instance, this role, this committee plays a very important role in an organization that are very, very technology intensive. Now, the board of directors, they take decision on advice of IT strategy committee and they instruct IT strategy committee for implementation. Now, the next committee which you will be, I'll be talking about is IT steering committee. Now, strategy committee, it's, it gets recommendations from, uh, you know, it recommends board of directors and based on those recommendations, board of director passes on the instructions for implementing to steering committee, right? Now, IT steering committee is responsible for implementing and monitoring. Now, one is for planning. So whenever you get a question related to, you know, strategy committee, it is talking about either advising board of directors or deciding about the strategy, right? Or the planning. But when you talk about the steering committee, it is basically for implementation and monitoring. The job, when you say implementation and monitoring, obviously the role is to approve project plans, budgets, and the members, who, who all are the members of IT steering committee? You will have chief information officer and other functional heads. Now, when I say functional heads, that means different departmental head, where people heads are involved in this committee. Now, this committee ensures that the IS processes supports the business requirement. Now, if you look at the pre previous slide, it talks about the alignment of IS department with the organization missions and objective. I wanted to say that strategy is talking about in what way my information system department can complement the organize, my organization missions and objective. Now, in IT steering committee is talking about how IS information system processes are going to support my business requirement. So once I have decided what my uh, information systems are going to be there for my business processes, now next is how those processes are going to fulfill the and support my business requirements. That's a part of steering committee. Now, IT steering committee implements, monitor and facilitates deployment of IT resources for a specific projects in support of business plans, right? So again, an important aspect is if you look into it, all these, these are basically the, the, the small, small definitions that you're reading. These are basically the answers of the questions which have been asked in the previous papers. So you have to read these, uh, they're very few, but you have to read it carefully, right? IT steering committee also is responsible for continuous monitoring. So if you look at it, then, you know, as I have compared, I tried to compare the two over here, 
you know it strategic committee and steering committee you know members include board members and specialized officer as i have said earlier steering is for implementation so it includes members executive chief information officer and other functionaries as required strategy committee advise board on it strategy whereas steering committee is responsible for implementing and monitoring of it projects if you look at the responsibilities of it strategy committee alignment of uh, uh, strategy committee has alignment of it with business objectives whereas steering committee has responsibility for approving project plans and budget strategy committee has responsibility of exposure to it risk because when you are planning you do have to consider what are the it risk involved whereas the steering committee has a responsibility of setting the priorities what is to be done first and what milestones have to be achieved you can read it that's it now it governance now and now again if you uh, come we've uh, come to finally at uh, this point where we need to summarize it so it governance board of director it strategy committee and it steering committee these are the four terms that will be appearing in the it strategy committee and steering committee question paper uh, questions So, if you look at IT strategy committees at the top, because it advises board on IT strategy, then you have board of directors. They have to take the decision on the basis of suggestions given by the IT strategy committee, and then accordingly instruct the IT steering committee for implementation and monitoring. With this, we have come to the third, uh, uh, you know, third uh, level, uh, third you can say that uh, portion, our uh, part of our. Uh, governance and management of information system that is alignment of information technology with the business objectives now business processes and objectives should always be the driver for it requirement now it requirement in the sense that if in case uh, i am requiring for certain information technology or you know any technical assistance then it they should be directly concerned with my business processes and objectives again as we have talked about it that is remember strategic committee it strategy committee has a responsibility of aligning it initiatives along with the business objectives and missions they are talking about the same now business objectives should be the prime consideration for the it strategy now business objectives means why the business is existing that should be the concern that what business wants to achieve and those considerations should decide what it strategy should be right the first step in reviewing the it organizations uh, and uh, an organizations it strategic plan is to understand the business plan now this is a very uh, uh, different business plan from the perspective now if you, you must have heard the word business plan in terms of you know startups and all that that they talk now here they are talking about that uh, if you are reviewing any organizations uh, strategic plan that means where organization wants to move in the in the future or in which direction the organization wants to move ahead then it's essential that you need to understand the business plan that what business or the what the organization intend to achieve it alignment with business objective is assured by involvement of top management now another this is direct question uh, often comes and often i mean i think this mostly it comes it says if you wanted to align it that is your in alignment means that your information technology uh, uh, you know is used in the organization is primarily for supporting the business objective that means your business objectives if fulfilled using information technology uh, the results are extraordinary and good for the organization and this can be assured so that that now what i am trying to say is that the board of directors and the top level management is primarily responsible for aligning because they they are at the strategic level so they are supposed to look into the objectives business objective and see how it can be used now factors to be considered when formulating the it strategy number first is the business objective the next is the risk and benefits of implementing it strategy now every or uh, information technology has its own advantages as well as the risk associated with it so i i, I can only I, one cannot say that the only benefits are there there are obviously risk risk of, of technology obsolescence risk of uh, you know the security privacy data privacy data security threats you know attack cyber attack all these aspects are part of the implementing tech, it tech, uh, information technology so uh, strategy the cost of current it in terms of value to the business now it's very essential again it's a part of the feasibility study uh, i would like to you know suggest that when you are talking about information technology initiatives or strategies or you know any recommendations from it strategy committee 
then you must compare it in terms of what is going if we if we implement this technology then what uh, value my business is going to get that should be very clearly defined then we have uh, it uh, balance scorecard now three main indicators just like i mean i hope you those who have done mba or might have heard with the word called balance scorecard uh, balance scorecard talks about you know uh, performance uh, uh, that you do not it clearly says that do not focus only on financial metrics do consider other aspects of the uh, you know performance also but uh, here you will find that in case of it balance scorecard uh, the financial metrics is not a part of it they there are four indicators but uh, and uh, out of those four indicators financial performance is not a part of the balance scorecard that's very important and you should keep in mind because uh, that's what here i have written three but in fact there are four i'll show you in the next slide but uh, do remember that the financial performance is not considered part of it balance scorecard it is part of regular normal strategic balance scorecard but not part of it scorecard now success of it balance scorecard depend upon the involvement of senior management in it strategy planning so one thing is for very uh, very clear that if you want your uh, you know it initiative it strategy it information technology policy security anything related to this you know implementation of uh, or success or performance is concerned then make sure that your senior management is involvement is very high the objective of it balance scorecard is to optimize the performance now again a scorecard has got something to do with the performance there are certain metrics those metrics have to be checked and then evaluated in terms of performance and their key performance indicators have to be defined before implementing it balance scorecard now again as i have used the word performance then you need to specify what are the performance indicators that will be considered and beforehand before we implement the scorecard now we move ahead with the roles of various functions of uh, information technology now I, as you have been discussing then again as a review type of a thing very shortly I'll, and fastly i'll do that board of directors it governance is primarily the responsibility of the board of directors so governance is the word which goes with directly with the board of directors or the top management strategy committee to advise board of directors on it initiatives strategy committee consists of board members and specialized non board members non board members are these are the technical people who are expert in their own domain which that's why you must have heard that you know ministry of corporate affairs also says that you know independent directors uh, these are the directors who are having uh, holding a technical qualifications in different different areas and when they bring uh, when they join the board then they bring uh, you know different perspective to the Uh, board steering committee as i have mentioned earlier aligning information system department with the organization's missions and objective uh, then the it steering committee monitor and facilitates deployment of it resources love project steering committee consists of senior representative from business functions that will be affected by the new system for providing overall direction and monitoring the cost schedules and timetable now when i say project steering com- steering committee now these are the you know normally when we when you wanted to start a particular project it related project in an organization then there are certain people who will be directly department or you know we normally do that department wise so that department is going or a business function is directly going to be affected with the change or with the implementation of new it system so th- it is uh, project steering committee consists of mem- senior representative from business functions who will be affected that is who are being considered for you know I, uh, implementation of it initiatives so those will be the people who are who will be the senior representative will be part of the project steering team and why they are part of the project team because they they would like to provide the you know guidance and direction and mon- they, sh- they can easily monitor the cost schedules and the timetable along with the other deliverables the next is the user management now user management is basically the owns as ownership of the project and the resulting system the whosoever is the end user has to be the owner right the review and approve deliverables as they are defined and accomplished now before like say for instance beforehand before we start a project we define what the project would be then we define the deliverables that is what i am going to deliver what the project team is going to deliver to that particular department 
and then who is going to ultimate then they would like to uh, they are, then their third then the person then the department will be there like user management the those who have the actual user so they will have to review and approve that the okay fair enough the deliverables are done and accomplished as they have been promised system development management they provide a technical support for the hardware and software environment by developing installing and operating the requested system the hardware itself cannot do anything we all know that we require software like say for instance if you buy a laptop without an operating system it can do nothing similarly it department do require system development management team these are the technical support people uh, they are responsible for hardware and software environment they develop they install maintain and operate important words project sponsor it is the owner of the data uh, is the owner of the data and the owner of the system under development having responsibility of providing functional specification through the functional user now say for instance if i am a technical team heading a technical team and i have to develop a pro i have to implement an it uh, initiative at a particular department now i don't understand that how the department works so there has to be some project sponsor this project sponsor is responsible for giving me the data and he is supposed to tell me how the system works and he has a responsibility of providing functional specifications that is what are the things that i must be very careful when developing an it uh, you know uh, platform and how the uh, through the my use functional users will actually be using them we have come to the last uh, section of this and that's a quality assurance and quality management now assurance means uh, somebody is giving me an assurance uh, that is uh, you know guaranteeing something that is the things are okay and control means i am defining the limits within which the quality has to lie now quality assurance is a process to provide adequate confidence that an item or a product conforms to established requirement must have heard quality assurance isi mark and all that these are basically they provide you know various uh, trademarks are there they they, they pro give you an assurance that okay fair enough the quality standards are of a particular level QA that is quality assurance personnel verify that systems changes are authorized tested implemented in a controlled manner that is anything like for example for electrical appliances if you say if you have a stamp or you know a trademark of ISI then we believe that okay fair enough that the equipment is going to be fairly reliable quality control is a process for conducting tests or review to verify and ensure that the product is defect free and as per the requirement of the user like say for instance quality control means that the 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 for example you must have heard quite some 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 time back that you know that uh, maggi was using some lead in their product right that, that was a question of quality assurance was uh, being questioned and the quality control was you know somewhere compromised because they have gone beyond the limit normal limit specified limit of using that lead so quality control had been in proper place then maggi would have never done that quality assurance personnel performs uh, basically the quality assurance that an item or a product conforms to the set uh, down requirements and the quality control observation techniques uh, uh, or activities to ensure that the requirement uh, quality are fulfilled uh, again if you look into the chart that quality assurance qa and qc so quality assurance is basically proactive and quality control is reactive that's very clear quality assurance prevent defects and quality control finds the defects uh, quality assurance is more focused on process and quality control is more focused on product we move with the to quality control now quality control is responsible for ensuring that the software in particular because we are talking about it so we'll talk about software is free from defects and meets user expectations the quality control is performed before the programs are moved into production now the, for example if you are actually may trying to perform you know there are certain control measures that i will ensure Uh, when i am developing a particular software so that i uh, you know that i actually do not commit those mistakes for an effective quality assurance it is recommended to have an independent quality assurance group independent within the organization that is like say for instance if i am working within the organization and i am working within a department and for that department if i am supposed to be the person who is going to look after as a quality assurance or my teammate then it is not recommended quality control should not be performed by an individual whose role would create a segregation of duties conflict that means there is a clash of duties so under no circumstances should an individual review his own work now for example i am doing a work and i am also the one who is going to perform the quality control check that's not recommended 
So quality management, if you are talking about, helps in controlling, measuring, and improving the business processes. Some of the quality management may include software development, maintenance and implementation, purchase of hardware and software, operational activities, service management, security, and HR management. Now let's move quickly to the question section, practice questions and their explanation. Uh, I hope um, it was not, it was too much, but again, you can uh, listen to the video again, and then you can uh, check these questions. Now, I'm talking about the practice questions related to outsourcing. Which of the following clause in outsourcing contract helps most to improve service level and minimize the cost? You, you, instead of reading the options, try to spend more time in reading the questions because questions they themselves are talking about, they're not saying that, uh, look at the language of the question, which of the following clauses in outsourcing contract contract helps most. That means all of them must be helping, but the one which is helping the most should be considered, giving in consideration that it will help me in improving the service level and also it will minimize the cost. You have to look into it and then find out how the service level can be improved and the cost can be minimized. The first is use of latest, OS stands for operating system and the hardware. Yeah, it can. Again, sharing performance uh, bonuses, penalties for non-compliance and training to the outsource staff. Now, all of these will not bring out improved service level other than option B. Because when a person you are outsourcing, he has gained sharing performance bonus, then he will ensure that the service levels are of a very high. So again, answer B has got uh, improved service level. And when the service level is improved and extraordinary, then obviously the cost goes down. So gain sharing performance bonus will provide a financial incentive to go beyond stated terms of agreement. Because if you're giving them a bonus, you know, then you need not to mention that the level of service should be good. Second question, an organization has outsourced some of its information system processes. What again, the very fond of IS, CISA is very fond of using this word. What is the most important function to be performed by information system management in such scenario? Now, read the question again. It says, has outsourced some of its processes, right? Information system. So, what is the most important functions uh, performed by information system management in such scenario? Now, first is ensuring that the outsourcing charges are paid as per the service level agreement. Now, obviously, it has to be there. Training to staff of outsource vendors, not my concern. Uh, levy of penalty for non-compliance, yes, it will be part of the service level agreement. Monitoring the outsourcing provider's performance. Now, again, the, as I've said, when we are talking about outsourcing, there is a lot of risk involved. How do I mitigate the risk? By mitigate the risk by continuously monitoring the performance of the vendor. So monitoring the outsource provider performance, which should be the correct answer. So the most important function of IS management is to monitor the performance of vendor for ensuring that the services are delivered as required. Moving to the question number three, an organization has outsourced a software development, which of the following is the responsibility of organization's IT management? Now the question is, you have to be very, in, in earlier question, it was information system management. Here it is talking about the IT management. Now, read again the question. This is almost, you know, he, earlier they have said some of the IS processes, now they've changed it to outsource software development. Now, software development means that the, 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 this, the software which I'm going to use for running my business processes is being outsourced and is being asked by somebody else to develop. So in that case, what is the responsibility of the IT management team? Number one, ensuring that outsourcing charges are paid as per the service level agreement. That's okay, part of it. Training to the staff, not my concern. Levy of penalty again, monitoring the outsource uh, uh, performance. Sorry, I mean, I have missed out. Uh, instead of third option is, uh, I have written the copy, just the same thing by mistake. Third one is ensures that the formal contracts are in place. Now, when I'm talking about software development, then I have to formally enter into an agreement with the person where I have to make sure what are the terms and conditions in terms of contract that have to be put in place so that both are legally, you know, implementable and uh, exercisable. So without uh, formal contracts, it is difficult to enforce the term of contract. 
and in absence of any formal written agreement. Written agreement assist management in ensuring compliance with the contractual requirement. So, I mean, third option over here should be ensure that the formal contracts are in place. I'm sorry for that. But anyways, uh, you can bear with me. An IS, uh, again, for an IS auditor observed that the outsourcing vendor have been appointed without formal written agreement. The IS auditor should recommend that, manage, uh, recommend that to management. That is, number one, obtain independent uh, assurance of the third party service provider, not my concern, sets up a process of monitoring the service delivery, third party, you no. Know, ensures that the formal contracts are in place. Now, again, the same type of a thing because IS auditor is observing that uh, outsourcing vendor have been appointed without any formal contract. So then he chances are there, he may, he may back it out. It's a question of commitment and performance. So in that case, the option C that is ensures that the formal contracts are in place is correct. And uh, IT organization has outsourced IT support service. A probable advantage of outsourcing is now, as I mentioned in the beginning, outsourcing has got two functions. The first was the expert service and the second was cost saving. So here let's look into the options. That is a reliance can be placed on expertise of outsourcing vendor. I think it's correct. More control can be exercised over IT processing. No, organization can transfer the accountability in terms of privacy law. It can never happen. Employee satisfaction may increase. No, it doesn't make any sense. So option A is correct. That is, reliance can be placed on expertise of outsourcing vendors because through outsourcing uh, arrangement, because you normally outsource to a person who is expert in that very field. Again, an organization has outsourced designing of IT security policy. Which of the following functions cannot be outsourced? And I'm pleased to remember, even if you have, this is a very crucial thing that IT security policy, they have outsourced someone else to develop it and design it. So which of the following functions cannot be outsourced, which means if IT security policy has any loopholes, then can an organization at the end of the day say that okay, this, this uh, you know, flaw occurred because it was not designed by us, it is designed by somebody else, no, they cannot. So which means out of these options, we must look for the accountability. The first says accountability for the IT security policy, right? Second says benchmarking security policy with, the, uh, with other organization in the industry, okay, that can be done. Implementing the IT security policy. This is only done once it is being accepted. And user awareness for IT security policy. Out of thing, out of these, I think A, the accountability for IT security policy uh, cannot be transferred absolutely because we have discussed earlier also. Other functions can be done. Next, an organization has outsourced IT support service to a provider in other country. Now that's interesting. Which of the following conclusions should be the main concern for the information system auditor? Now, when you are talking about different country, always remember, no matter service level agreement or whatever, legal jurisdiction will be different. That means the laws, bylaws, they will be different. So this is a normal understanding, right? So we can, but you have options which are very you know closely linked. Like say, for instance, first says legal jurisdiction can be questions, right? Increase in overall cost, yeah, this is also possible. Delay in providing service due to time difference, maybe. Difficult to monitor performance of outsourced vendor due to geographical distance, yeah, possibly. Should be the main concern. Now, when I talk about the main concern, that means the main concern should be the legal jurisdiction because jurisdiction, I mean, the laws, rules, and regulations, they can be different. So in case an absence of any proper clarification, there can be compliances as well as legal issues. With this, we now move on to the practice questions related to the section of IT strategy and, and steering committee. The IT steering committee question says, uh, the IT steering committee's role in IT planning process is, now if, as we have talked about steering, I'm not talking about the strategy committee. First is, option says, document meeting notes, Second, approve expenditure of funds, conduct a meeting regularly, and approve meeting notes. Now, our, we've seen that strategy committee is basically responsible for implementing and monitoring. So when you talk about implementing, that means you're talking about approve expenditure of funds. That is, this, this means that's a part of the implementation. Now, IT strategy committee, and I have given these explanations for you to remember if you're looking at. Now, IT strategy committee advice board on IT strategy. 
IT steering committee responsibilities include provide approving project plan, budget, setting priorities, milestone, appropriate use of resources, and ensuring that the project meets the business requirement. Scheduled meeting is absolutely the routine, uh, routine activity to be taken by IT executives and monitoring of outsourcing agreement to be done in continuous basis by IT. So that, I mean, the last two points are basically explaining that you know, all these are regular part of it. Second, who is responsible for monitoring overall project direction cost schedules for system development projects? Now, I, I mean, I'm sure you can easily make it out that first is the user management, then IT steering committee, IT strategy committee, and system development management. Now, how smartly they have put this word, if you clear, if you look into it to get you confused, answer is obviously, you know, clear cut IT steering committee, but they've given the option D as system development management. If you get confused with these two, you might select system development management, but don't fall into this trap. IT steering committee is responsible for implementing the uh, uh, and uh, monitoring of IT initiatives. User management provides a functional requirement I have discussed with you. IT steering committee is responsible for monitoring overall projects, achievements of milestone, and alignment of project with business requirement. System development management provides, as I have mentioned earlier, for technical hardware and software support. Third, an IT steering committee would most likely perform which of the following functions? Steering committee, which of the following functions? Now you look into it. The first is issuance of purchase order to impanel vendor. That means I'm issuing you know, my orders. Provide hardware support, not a part of them. Prioritization of IT project as per the business requirement. And the next is advice board on IT strategy. Now advice board on IT strategy, that's a part of IT strategy committee. So you look into it, uh, B and D are out of questions, out of A and C. If you look into it, they were supposed to monitor, uh, IT steering committee has to you know, schedule a project and monitor the IT projects based as per the business requirements. So the option C is absolutely correct. The chairperson for a steering committee who can you know, have significant impact on business area would be, now I'm, and then they're talking about who's gonna a person who's responsible or who can have a significant impact on business area. Now, please read the question very carefully, business area. Now I'm talking about the options are chief financial officer, chief information officer, project manager, and executive level manager. Now, significant impact on a business area, only that person can give who is at the, who is at the you know, helm of the affair of that very particular business area. Out of these, these are all senior positions other than the executive level manager who is really working for the, that particular business area. So if you look into it, board members generally are not involved in the implementation because first, at the moment, the question uses the word steering committee, that is they're talking about implementation. When you're talking about the implementation, it is basically not the top level management, but the middle and the lower level management. The chair of steering committee should be a person, executive level manager with authority to make the decision. Chief information officer or his representative can be the member who can provide input on organization wide strategy. That's a, it's a bigger picture. System analyst does not have uh, an appropriate level authority. So it's very clear that, uh, so that's what I'm re repeatedly requesting, read the language of the question very carefully. An IS steering committee should include members from different departments and management level. IS security policies and procedures have been properly executed. Key executives and representatives from user management and all board members. Now, if, uh, you cannot have all board members part of the steering committee because it is talking about implementation. Members from different department and management level, again, it cannot be done. B makes doesn't option B doesn't make any sense. IC security policies and procedures have been properly executed. So answer is obviously key executive and representative from user management. Now we move ahead with uh, another section that is IT alignment with business objective. The question says an IS auditor is reviewing an organization IT strategic plan. He should first review. Now, when you say an organization strategic plan, that means I am looking into a plan, information uh, technology directional plan used by any organization for a milestone to achieve down the lane. So out of these options, let's see which fulfills that. Now, first, alignment of IT processes as per business requirement. Now, this is a very confusing option. 
the business plan, the capacity of install technology and latest technology trend, all are very confusing. Read carefully, it says, an auditor is reviewing an organization IT strategic plan. To understand the IT strategic plan, I need to understand first the business plan of the organization because only then I can find out what are the business mission and objectives. And only then by reviewing IT strategic plan, I can find whether the um, uh, IT uh, projects are going to complement the business plans, missions and objectives or not. So capacity of installed technology doesn't make any sense. Latest technology trends, it doesn't make any sense over here. Alignment of IT processes as per business requirements. First, I need to understand what are the business requirements and those understanding for those business requirement only comes if I read the business plan. So the option B is business plan. You'll find these questions invariably appearing in the exam. The very first step in reviewing organization strategic plan is to review and understand the business plan. Without understanding the context in which business operate and its expansion plan, review of the strategic plan may not be that effective. To evaluate the IT strategic plan, the IT auditor would first need to familiarize himself or herself with the business plan. I hope it makes sense now. Information security governance require strategic alignment in terms of, now these are the words you, normally what happens is that okay, there is a one-liner question, we, we read it once and we think that we can jump to the answers. I'll suggest strongly have a firm grip on the question because number of questions are too many and you will not get time to, you know, uh, you can mark it that I'll do it later, but later doesn't come. So you have to do it at one, when you are solving the questions there and then. So if it says information security governance, now when I'm talking about governance, I'm talking about, you know, it, it says, if you're talking about information security governance, it requires strategic alignment. Now alignment is basically in the sense, goals and objectives and IT, they are going in the one direction. Enterprise requirements, option one says, enterprise requirement are the basis for security requirement. Security requirements are the basis for enterprise requirement, current technology trends, benchmarking industry standard. Now, information security to be effective should be in line with the enterprise requirement. So if you look into these options, it's very clear that if you're talking about security point of view, then enterprise requirements are the basis for security requirement. Now, let's like say for instance, what security I would like to have, it depends what type of enterprise I am running. So my enterprise requirement becomes the basis for my security requirement. The best way to determine whether I information system function supports organization business objective is to ensure that, now options are there, let's see. IA information system has latest available equipment. That doesn't make any sense. IS plans are designed as per the business objectives. We have seen that, that could be. All resources are utilized effectively, efficiently. Not, not, not very sure about it. Information system has proper control over outsourcing partner. No, I think the option B makes a lot of sense. That is information plans are designed as per the business objectives. To go on IT effectively, IT and business should move in the same direction, requiring that the IT plans are aligned with the organization's business plan. When I say aligned, aligned means complement. Complement means they try to uh, you know, uh, make, each other, uh, make each other work efficiently. IT governance to be effective requires, now if I'm trying to talk about uh, IT governance or the effectiveness of IT governance, then the option given are, uh, business strategies and objectives support the IT strategy. Business strategy is derived from IT strategy. Cost-effective IT governance and IT strategy supports the business strategy and objective. Now, the first is business strategies are a dis and, ob and objectives support the IT strategy. Now, it's the other way around because uh, normally you will find that IT requirements are being decided or being developed by the uh, IT strategic uh, committee, considering the fact that what are the what uh, in what way my IT uh, projects and my strategy can help in achieving my business strategies and objectives. Which means IT strategy, what we are trying to develop, should support the business strategy and objective, not the other ways around. That business strategy and objectives should support the IT strategy. Because initially, when I'm make, starting a business, I have a business strategy and business objectives to, to make my business grow. 
But as my business grows and expand, I require technology to become more efficient. So what happens? In that case, my IT strategy should support basically my business strategies and objectives. Next, IS Auditor is reviewing software development process. Which of the following best way to ensure that the business requirements are met during the software development? Now, we are talking about the development. Now, when you are talking about the development, you are talking about that, that it's basically time when you are coding and you know, things like that, so system development life cycle. So the options again, proper training to the developer is given, programmers with good business knowledge, adequate documentation, and user engagement in the development process. It's very, very essential. Like say, it's like just getting my house done. So even if I have given outsourced my work to the uh, uh, you know architect, but still my involvement as a user has to be on a top priority because uh, my engagement in the in the process of construction of my house plays an important role. So here, what happens is that. User engagement in the development process is essential because at the end of the day, the software which you are trying to develop will be used by the user. So users are engaged from early stages of software development and most software development techniques start by asking users what they want or need the system to do. We have come to the, another section of it. Now we're talking about questions related to the balance score. And now these are small questions I've picked up from the previous examinations. They can give you an idea as to how the questions are being framed and accordingly you can study. So those who of you are, who are running short of time can, cannot uh, you know, read the study material, can just listen to these, you know, uh, convert these uh, videos uh, into MP3 and listen when you are driving to your work or you know, commuting in between. So before implementing an IT balance scorecard, an organization must, number first, deliver effective and efficient services define key performance indicators, provide business value to IT project, ensure IT expenses within the budget. Now, no, no, nothing has to be thought in this case because it is very clear that if I'm in implementing any you know, scorecard, then I need to define that what will be my performance indicators, what will be the metrics that I'm gonna use to, against which I'm gonna use to measure the performance. So define the key performance indicators. Most likely, uh, the effect of uh, senior management commitment to IT strategic planning is, number one, the lack of investment in technology, a lack of methodology for system development, technology not aligned with the business, and absence of control over the technology contract. Now, let's read the question carefully. Uh, it says, most likely, the effect of lack of senior management, as I have discussed since the beginning, that if you want your strategic planning to be very strong, aligned with your business objectives and uh, you know, strategy, then it make sure that the top level management involvement is very high. And here they are saying that what will happen if they are not involved? Obviously look into the reason that the technology will not be aligned with your business objective. The major risk of absence of IT alignment with the business objective, the steering committee should exist to ensure that IT strategy support the organization goals. Do you remember the diagram where I have talked? It is the IT strategy committee that makes recommendations to the board of directors and the board of directors then pass on the instructions for implementations and monitoring to the IT steering committee. Which of the following is uh, uh, primary objective of IT uh, performance measurement process? Number one, minimize error, gather performance report, establish performance baseline, and optimize performance. Now, the, if you look into it, at a minimum, um, objective of an IT performance, uh, uh, you know, primary in the sense, the basic, the minimize error and all these part of it, but the ultimate objective is that I want you to improve my performance. The, any system which is already working, I want it to improve its performance. So prime objective of IT measurement process is to optimize the performance of IT service, an IT performance measure can be used to optimize performance, measure, manage, product service assur assurance, quality, and make budget decisions, right? IT balance scorecard is a business, gov a business governance tool intended to monitor IT performance evaluation indicator other than. Now, look at the, they could have easily asked that is the part, they are asking that which is not the part of balance IT balance scorecard. I have started me in the beginning, I have said, that the balance scorecard usually have four metrics, but IT balance scorecard, despite having four metrics, doesn't, doesn't have the financial uh, perspective of performance. So obviously you should immediately take the financial result. That is IT balance scorecard, BSC stands for balance scorecard, doesn't consider the factors 
of related to financial results. Like uh, now we are moving ahead, I mean, to the another section, which is role of various uh, functions of IT. Now, this is, these are important and tricky questions. I think you should uh, watch this video again and again. Who assumes ownership of system development project and the resulting system? Now, that means owner, we are talking about who is responsible for the, you know, as an owner. So let's look into it. User management, pr project steering committee, IT management, system developer. Now, I'm, I'll give you the explanation so that you can read it carefully. Project steering committee is ultimately responsible for total project management of IT related projects. They provide direction and monitor cost and project schedules. On the other hand, user management and system development management are involved in project to the extent of their role. However, responsibility lies with the project steering committee or you can say IT steering committee. User management assumes ownership of the project and a resulting system. They review and approve deliverable, deliverables as they are defined and accomplished. Who assumes, read the question, who assumes ownership of the system development project and the resulting system? Now, primarily when the system is being developed or in the process of being developed, who is supposed to be the you know, owner of that? It's basically the project steering committee or it's IT steering committee who has initiated that work because they're responsible for implementation and monitoring. Once the project is being developed, then the ultimate risk, the, uh, uh, you know, ownership goes to the <coughs> user management. Sorry, who of the following ultimately responsible for providing requirement specification to the software development project team? Now, again, I, this question should be easy for you. If you, you have, if you've seen that the project sponsor is a person who owns the data. The whole, see, for example, if I'm developing a project for a particular department then how do I get to know the, about the data? How do I know about the functionalities of that particular department? Somebody has to be there. So that means there has to be a sponsor, a project sponsor, the person with whom I will be interacting to find out my details, data, and the functionalities. So if you look into it, the options given are team leader, project sponsor, system analyst, and steering committee. Now, you, here I cannot say steering committee because I am talking about requirement specification to the software development project team. Now I'm talking about the specifications. So only a person who is directly concerned with the, uh, who handles the data and who handles the functions can give me those specifications. So in that case, project sponsor is the correct answer. Accountability for maintenance of appropriate security measures over information assets reside with number one, the security administrator, database administrator, resource owner, or IT group. Very clearly, I mean, the person who is owning the resources are responsible for it. The resource owner are accountable for protection of their digital resources. Management has to make sure and ensure that all information assets, now when I'm talking about all information assets, that I'm talking about the data and the systems, they have an appointed uh, you know, resource owners after the assets are being duly classified and uh, the accessing privileges have been defined for them. System owners typically delegate their day-to-day -day custodianship to the system delivery operate operations group and the security responsibility to the administrators. Owners are accountable for maintenance of appropriate security measures. As I mentioned, if you're talking about the resource owners, then you know these are the people who are supposed to uh, define the privileges and the access right and it is the responsibility of the management that they should first classify all their information asset and based on those classification they should assign the resource owners that is who will be ultimately answerable for that very particular information asset an organization has established a steering committee to oversee its application development program Following is a function of the steering committee. Now, remember, if you recall what, what we talked about, steering committee, it is implementation and is, is talking about monitoring. Now, the first is documentation of requirement, escalation of project issues, designing of interface control, and specification of reports. Now, clearly, you will find that there is, if something is not going as per the decided timeline or you know, as per the plan, uh, then in that case, those things should be brought to the notice. That's the part option B, that is escalation of project issues. So the function of steering committee is to ensure the success of project. If there are factor or issues that potentially could affect planned result, then a steering committee should escalate them. Escalate them means they should bring it to the notice of the management. 
Requirement specification is the ultimate responsibility of. Now, requirement specification, what exactly you require? That is top management, or not at all. Project sponsors, yes. System analyst, no, it's not. And steering committee, no. So the project sponsor is the, now, why I am given to uh, use two questions on project sponsor? Because normally, they do not ask questions uh, on the various other uh, people I have, those I have mentioned in the options. They're very concerned with the word called project sponsors. So project sponsor is the manager in charge of the business function, whosoever, like say for instance, any business function or a process is being headed by a person that is called a project uh, a sponsor. The, who is the owner of the data and the owner of the system under development? He is responsible for providing functional specification through functional user, through functional user is the responsibility of the project sponsors. So uh, these were the few questions uh, which were there. And uh, I hope uh, you will find this uh, uh, system working. So with this, uh, I've come to this. It's a long session, but uh, I'll be uploading uh, other system uh, modules uh, shortly. Uh, till then, I wish you all the best. And uh, do watch the videos that are available on my channel. And do subscribe also. Thank you. Have a great day.